This video is an AP Bio review about proteins. If you are drowning in the details of AP Bio, well, here's your life raft. It's called learn-biology.com, and it provides you with what you need to crush AP Bio, the skills, the resources, the confidence. Sign up for a free trial today. We offer a money-back guarantee to anyone who completes our program. Don't delay, sign up today. Let's review proteins. So the monomer is an amino acid, and it has a central carbon over here, and connected to that carbon is an amine group over here that makes this basic in its structure, but over here on the other side, it's got a carboxyl group, and that makes it acidic, so therefore it's an amino acid. There's a hydrogen atom attached to the central carbon, and then there's a variable group, or an R group, and there are 20 variations, and that's true of all life. All life is built of the same 20 amino acids. That R group is also called a side chain, and it can be polar, nonpolar, acidic, or basic. There are four levels of protein structure. This is a super important topic. We're going to do an overview and then we're going to walk through all four of these levels. Primary structure is what's shown over here in A. It's a linear sequence of amino acids. It's genetically determined. The secondary structure, which is shown here and here, those are interactions that involve what's called the polypeptide backbone. When you um, do a dehydration synthesis and connect one amino acid to the next, to the next, to the next. That chain of carbon, carbon, nitrogen, carbon, carbon, nitrogen, that's the polypeptide backbone. The next level is called tertiary structure, and those are interactions between those R groups. And then finally, there's quaternary, fourth level structure, and that involves interactions between multiple folded tertiary peptides. Okay, let's talk about primary structure. In this diagram, A1, A2, A3, those all represent different amino acids. So the sequence of amino acids that make up a polypeptide, that's what you call multiple amino acids linked together, that's the primary structure. Proteins aren't really built by enzymes in the way that everything else is. They're built by ribosomes. The amino acid, here's one, here's another one, they're connected to one another by peptide bonds. So I was saying before, nitrogen, carbon, carbon, nitrogen, carbon, carbon. That's the polypeptide backbone. All of those amino acids linked together. That's primary structure. What's secondary structure? Well, here you have a nice diagram that shows you what that polypeptide backbone is. And the secondary structure emerges as interactions between the carbonyl groups over here and the um, amino or amine groups over here within the polypeptide backbone. Now, what happens is that interactions between these amine groups and these carbonyl groups, they form hydrogen bonds and they stabilize certain shapes. One of the shapes to know about is called an alpha helix, and that's kind of a corkscrew over here. So you can see that there's a hydrogen bond that's stabilizing this, hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond. So that forms that shape. Now the other thing that happens is if the parts of the polypeptide chain are either parallel to one another like this or anti-parallel to one another like this, then carbonyl and amino groups can again interact and form hydrogen bonds and that can lead to a form called a pleated sheet. And that's what we see over here. So are you looking for a better way to study for the AP Bio exam and to get an A in your AP Bio course? At learn-biology.com, we've got exactly that. We've got quizzes, we've got flashcards, we've got interactive tutorials that'll help you master the material that you're studying. We have comprehensive reviews for the AP Bio exam. We'll help you switch from overwhelmed to outstanding student. See you on learn-biology.com. Tertiary protein involves interactions between the side chains or the R groups. And there are a couple to know about. First of all, there are hydrogen bonds shown at number two. There are ionic bonds that are shown at number um, five over here. There are covalent bonds, which are shown at number three. So that was uh, between two sulfhydryl groups, another one of the functional groups. And this is a covalent bond that's very important in really tightly holding that protein into a specific shape. And then finally, you have what's called hydrophobic clustering, where nonpolar side chains will cluster together 
avoiding water. So down here, you see myoglobin, which is an oxygen storing protein that's found within muscle tissue. That's a tertiary protein folded into a specific shape. And you can see like over here, there's a whole bunch of alpha helices that are in that, in that structure. Quaternary structure, quaternary structure involves multiple polypeptides that interact with one another to create the final form of the protein. So those interactions might be hydrogen bonds, they might be ionic bonds, they might be hydrophobic interactions. So in this diagram, actually, you can see all uh, four of the levels. So here's the primary structure. Here's an alpha helix secondary structure. This hairpin turn is actually um, part of the tertiary structure over here. And then you have multiple polypeptides interacting. This molecule looks a lot like um, hemoglobin. This is kind of cool in light of our recent history. The spike protein that's on the outside of SARS-CoV-2, and in fact, all the SARS viruses, is also a quaternary protein that's made of multiple folded polypeptide chains. An application of what we learned about proteins is this question. Describe the structure and function of hemoglobin and explain the molecular cause of sickle cell disease. So sickle cell disease is an inherited blood disorder. It was one of the first molecular um, genetic diseases that was really well understood. The molecule that is in question here is hemoglobin. And hemoglobin, its function is to transport oxygen in our red blood cells. The structure, it's a quaternary protein. It's made of four polypeptide chains. Sickle cell disease is caused by a recessive mutation. We'll cover that in unit five. But the key idea is that there's a mutation that causes the amino acid valine over here to substitute for glutamic acid. And that's an important mutation because glutamic acid is acidic, whereas valine is nonpolar. The result of that is that when blood becomes deoxygenated, those mutated hemoglobin molecules, they form hydrophobic bonds with one another. Well, why? Because they have a hydrophobic amino acid sticking on the outside, and that causes them to do this. They cause uh, fibers to develop within the cells, and that causes the cells to become spiked like this. They're mutant cells, and those cells will then clump up within smaller arteries, and that causes these pain crises. It causes tissue damage. It's a debilitating disease. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success learn-biology.com and watch this next video.